As it was said, being and feeling a part of one global community can really help us uh, solve different problems and problems that arise on a daily basis and that we all face at the moment. Well, and the society and community is the main topic of the first session that we are starting with. Its name is Arabic Universities and the Effect on the Societies and Communities for Transformation to Better Future. And the chair of the session will be Professor Jan Sadlak, former president of IREC Observatory on Academic Ranking and Excellence. Good afternoon, Professor. Yes, can I, can I start talking? Yeah, yes, I'm we on hear the line. You. We hear you. Yeah, you are. You are. Uh, thank you. First of all, welcome to everyone and greetings from Paris, where I am now located and uh, have the pleasure to participate. As uh, you, yes, it had already been said by the president, um, we are still in the new normal times in which. Uh, we see each other, we hear each other, but we cannot have this third dimension of contact, which is so important for all human beings and so important for academic relations. We are missing it uh, very badly, and I wish and I am convinced that um, uh, we went through the difficult times, time, uh, testing time, um, we had uh, universities had to readjust uh, to something which is not and the uh, very essence of uh, the culture and history of academic uh, relations. But I think that, uh, as uh, President of King Abdulaziz said, will uh, it still will be us? Uh, when we will be able to see each other in person. Well, yeah, um, it is very obvious, and it is said in the information introducing the session, that universities are the main players in the development of the knowledge economy and building capacities. This is, this is uh, true, but it is sometimes it's worth it to, to repeat, not to ask, but maybe to the general public as well as to, to politicians. And um, this trying time of pandemia had uh, confirmed this crucial role of uh, the universities. Just let me mention the contribution of academics uh, directly and indirectly to the development of the vaccines. So, I think that, uh, once again, the truth is uh, confirmed. Now, going to the, to the very session, as uh, I had a privilege in the last years, uh, as a president, as a former president, to visit the Arab universities, and uh, you understand that I was looking at it also from the pers perspective of ranking. I am very pleased to uh, observe the progress with which uh, uh, Arab, Arabic universities um, uh, are approaching ranking. Uh, they are not uh, no longer scared of rankings. They are having a more, uh, how to say, realistic approach to, to what ranking can do and what ranking cannot do. As uh, 
almost 10 years of my presidency of Iraq, we were never claiming uh, the, 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 how to say, the, um, the predominant objectiveness of ranking, but we all, we always uh, were pointing out to the supplementary and uh, use of ranking as a tool for uh, better comparative analysis, particularly at the international level. So, um, and it was already mentioned by the president of the uh, King Abdulaziz University in, in the role of the university of this particular one is um, uh, it has to be seen uh, in the context of the strategic plans for the whole country. And I think that three uh, speakers, uh, which I am introducing now, and you can see it uh, on uh, on the screen, uh, will all will reflect in their own presentation how the um, uh, role of the universities is um, integrated into national strategies for development. Just let me uh, start with the president of Qatar University. Professor Al Denham, uh, whom I had uh, a pleasure um, to interact uh, during the IREC forum, which took, which was hosted by the Qatar University in March 2017. Time is running very fast, but I still keep fine memories of your um, hospitality, and it was really. And I wish you the success in the next year when we, the whole world will look how you are going uh, to deal with the World, uh, world Cup. So, uh, Professor Al-Dadham, would you be so kind and start uh, talking? One thing which is probably the advantage of the online events is the time frame is uh, so um, uh, important. So, unfortunately, I know that you have more to say than 15 minutes, but if it's possible, please keep it within this time frame. Professor al -Darham, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sadla. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, Can I do. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes thanks, I John. do. Thank you for the, the introduction. Uh, I am very honored to be part of this uh, panel, um, uh, and we are really, you know, uh, honored to to work uh, hand on hand with the IREG. Uh, for us at Qatar University, as a national university, probably we have some, uh, you know, a unique position for us when you compare Qatar University with some other universities uh, for several reasons. One of them is because Qatar is a, a small country. And uh, Qatar University is the national university. So uh, we, uh, you know, we, we usually get the lion's share of, our, of the graduates of the you know, high school system here in Qatar. So that's why you know, whatever we do, uh, our plans, uh, our strategies uh, will have a great impact, direct impact in uh, the higher education here in Qatar. And uh, by default, of course, it will affect uh, the community or the society in Qatar. So this is this gives us uh, an opportunity as well as puts a responsibility for us as uh, as uh, one of the main sole provider of higher education in the country. Now I would like to you know thank you for uh, you know to start our uh, presentation. I am not sure how am I going to uh, control it from my side, but uh, maybe. Uh, my presentation will consist, I hope that it will, you know, uh, finish uh, within uh, the allocated time, three parts. I will speak about the big picture of how would, you know, uh, what, is, what is the current situation for us uh, as a university. And uh, then I would uh, move forward towards uh, speaking about what uh, uh, experience with the transformation that we started to do and what would be the outcome or the output of such uh, uh, strategy uh, in the implementation, implementation phase. Uh, so uh, 
uh, again, uh, this uh, uh, strategy that we are talking about that we started in 2018, it is not just a, stra uh, a strategic plan, it is a transformation strategy that consists of, you know, uh, uh, different strategies uh, that will, uh, that, that goes hand on hand together and in, in parallel uh, so that it will give us the leap that we are looking for uh, taking into consideration the internal and the external factors and variables that affects the uh, socio-economic development of the country as well as the, uh, you know, the latest trends the, you know, with the higher education. Uh, so, uh, briefly, Qatar University is the national university of Qatar. Uh, it consists of about uh, more than 20,000 students, uh, with about uh, maybe 70% uh, of them are Qataris. Uh, and uh, uh, we are a small country, so, uh, you know, 20,000 or plus uh, students represent a high number. So basically, most of the people or the families here in Qatar uh, have a direct, uh, you know, uh, relationship with the university. Uh, the university uh, has uh, 10 different colleges, uh, including uh, uh, health, uh, what we call it, uh, the health uh, cluster, consists of uh, four different colleges, the College of Medicine, College of uh, Dental, uh, Dentistry, College of uh, Pharmacy, and College of uh, uh, health sciences. Um, we are the largest uh, degree uh, provider in higher education uh, and uh, most of our programs that we offer are internationally accredited by the different uh, uh, international uh, accreditation bodies. Uh, the university also has, uh, you know, I think a good record in terms of ranking uh, I think we are uh, number 224 uh, globally ranked by the QS and we also uh, within the top uh, 300 to 350 on the uh, Times Higher Education ranking. We also uh, been ranked uh, as number two in the Arab world on both QS and Times Higher Education. Uh, we also provide uh, 15 different research uh, centers that support uh, the, uh, our uh, research priorities and supports the, uh, as well the, uh, the needs and the challenges of the community and in the country. Uh, some of our uh, colleges have really, you know, uh, good uh, academic standing. Uh, for example, the College of Engineering uh, falls on the ranking between 126 and 150, uh, and some other programs also uh, share similar uh, uh, standing. Um, with respect to the transformation strategy that we have started in 2016 uh, forward, uh, this is the new vision for transformation and post-reform that will provide that we wish that you know to make you know a quantum leap for a Qatar University and uh, taking into consideration different uh, aspects at that time when we started this. Uh, first of all, um, our national transformation vision for the country, uh, national vision of uh, 2030, uh, the stakeholders and perspectives that the university has. Uh, the uh, uh, internal uh, challenges and uh, opportunities that we have within the university as an organization, as well as the international uh, trends uh, with respect to higher education. Uh, usually, for uh, a, a university, uh, you know, we started as a you know as with a with a you know the the typical university model that was uh, before 2002 focusing uh, mainly in education uh, from 2003 to 2015 2016 uh, we moved into more classical university by supporting uh, uh, you know the three main missions that are education research and community services 
and uh, tried to enhance our academic uh, programs uh, to be you know uh, looked at at international standards and the outcomes of such programs that we provide is according to the international uh, level that we aim for since 2006 2017 we you know started into our uh, a new uh, uh, strategy to move the university into a new uh, you know, a category, you know, uh, related to towards a transformative uh, university model to be more intensive related to uh, innovation and uh, a greater uh, socio-economic uh, uh, impact on our society. And we did that through, you know, different, you know, uh, uh, approaches. Uh, I will move forward, uh, you know, quickly. Uh, because of the uh, time that I have uh, already spent almost half of my time. So there are several uh, internal challenges that we had at that time, uh, including that, you know, lots of or most of the, the main body of our uh, students, especially male students, are, uh, you know, not uh, towards STEM uh, programs. Uh, the, uh, also, the attrition rate for the students wa was high. Uh, you know, uh, uh, lots of our students are academically at risk, besides some other challenges. Uh, also, from the stakeholder perspective, uh, the, you know, uh, we, we, we seek to have distinctive excellence in education uh, and research that was a request by the by our stakeholders and well, this is what they expect from our graduates and enhance the quality of the societal engagement as well as Q socio economic development role in Qatar since we are the national university uh, and there are some other uh, you know requirements including to have more accessibility to our programs to be more flexible uh, the, the student experience and the student success has to be also according to the, you know, parents and the students' expectations, as we know that the students nowadays are more aspiring and uh, their demands become, you know, at higher uh, stage. Also, the international trends, uh, you know, with the fourth industrial revolution, this puts, you know, lots of challenges and uh, lots of you know expectations from the academic programs that the universities provide nowadays as we know you know uh, workplace became uh, more uh, uncertain uh, you know uh, uh, because of the advancement of uh, of knowledge uh, the advancement and uh, you know with the fourth industrial revolution uh, related whether it's related to uh, artificial intelligence or international internet of things or uh, cyber security or others you know other disruptive uh, technologies that would affect uh, our uh, way of doing business our lives uh, all of this uh, have and will uh, you know in the future you know uh, change the workplace and its requirements the competencies of our graduates the attributes the skills there so all of this you know requires a different uh, setup a different you know way of delivering things and we have to be up to date also uh, Qatar University has to respond to the national vision of the country uh, our you know uh, vision our national vision uh, stands under you know uh, four uh, main pillars human development social development economic development and environmental development this requires uh, modernization for the government and uh, semi-government and non-governmental you know uh, organizations including qatar university and we have to face you know this challenge and to be part and proactive of the national vision of the country since we are the national university so uh, so we have redefined the three dimensions of our uh, strategy and this uh, transformation strategy responds to uh, the strategic context uh, and leads towards maximizing our uh, impact in Qatar. 
through three main you know main wheels or engines that we would say it's about the education transformation and we call this qatar university model of uh, education system or uh, you know education uh, excellence in education the institutional transformation that will lead towards impact and transformation for our research and uh, social uh, economic uh, impact um, as we said uh, in our journey to move from classical university towards the envisioned Qatar university that we are looking for uh, it is uh, mapped with the pillars of the uh, national vision that is instead of uh, education uh, we are looking for towards human capital development and this includes a teaching and learning strategy and uh, a student experience strategy uh, instead of uh, research as a core mission we are talking about research and development so uh, it is a research and knowledge advancement strategy and as well as for instead of community service we are moving towards something called societal development through engagement strategy through uh, entrepreneurship and innovation strategy and through digital transformation strategy for us as a uh, organization so uh, these you know uh, you know envision uh, you know development you know pillars that we are moving towards uh, we, we you know wire or uh, you know to move towards the envisioned university that we are looking for uh, i will We'll uh, move forward, you know, uh, towards the next slide. Uh, you know, this uh, diagram represents our current, you know, strategies. We have uh, seven different uh, goals uh, supported by, uh, you know, or sorry, six uh, the strategic goals supported by seven uh, different, you know, strategies. And we have some core values that we have identified. Yeah, you know, uh, including excellence, integrity, diversity, social responsibility, innovation, and academic freedom, and our strategies supporting our uh, goals, uh, teaching and learning strategy, a student and uh, student experience strategy, and the rest of the strategies. As you can see, there are five strategies. Uh, we call them core strategies, and there are two may, uh, other, you know, enabling strategies uh, for uh, digital transformation and innovation and entrepreneurship. So the second part of the presentation is about moving towards uh, the critical components uh, for the uh, innovation uh, as an innovation intensive uh, components for our strategy. And uh, I will uh, move forward towards, this is the core of our strategy, the model of transformative education that we call it. It has uh, a holistic transformation in program, uh, program structure into graduate attributes guided competency-based qualification framework with the below character, uh, characters, accessibility, success, flexibility, quality, efficiency, and national capacity building. Inclusive of state-of-the-art education excellence framework with content, knowledge, skill, attitude, and pedagogy implementation, the below descriptors. Learning-centric, experiential, research-informed, competency-based, digitally enriched, and entrepreneurial. These are the main competencies of our you know uh, what we call it a qu model okay with also uh, transformative faculty bo uh, you know uh, staff uh, that are you know uh, will uh, prepared to deliver these uh, this uh, excellence uh, what we call it education excellence framework the, the student experience framework is within end-to-end -end learner students experience framework that starts from school and keep on after graduation with the below experience 
selection experience from the beginning, uh, you know, through the admission towards onboard experience, this three or four or five years, uh, you know, experience. So both inside and outside the classroom. In fact, the classroom would be the least that the student will get the knowledge from. The knowledge should be coming from holistic, compar uh, you know, uh, uh, approach uh, through, you know, what we call it the student experience uh, through whether inside or outside the class. Of course, you know, once they graduate, you know, we will continue uh, our collaboration with our graduates, uh, you know, to, to feed, you know, back, to get the feedback from them uh, through the continuing education and the lifelong learning experience. Okay, so I will uh, move uh, as well uh, forward. This uh, innovation and transformation enabling strategies that we are talking about, which is the, uh, in a way, uh, the that would uh, have an impact. We believe this will impact our national uh, innovation and economy here in Qatar, uh, uh, as well as the digital ecosystem in Qatar. So for the first one, uh, innovation and entrepreneurship as mindset uh, for the cultural trait, uh, innovation and entrepreneurship capabilities and competencies, and from innovation to new startups and ventures. And for that, we have established recently uh, a company, a holding company called Qatar University Holding Company that will uh, have uh, the, uh, that will uh, be an incubation for the spin of companies as well as for our ventures in the future. It seems like I have passed my time, so I will stop here and uh, I hope that uh, through the discussion time uh, we will have the chance to, you know, highlight some of the uh, things that, uh, you know, uh, could be, you know, uh, also discussed. Thank you very much, Professor. Um Al Derham, uh, it, it, I, I, as, you, as you know, uh, the, your slides will be available to participants, and um, and those who would like to be uh, to to receive more information in details of the very comprehensive strategy of development will be able to obtain uh, feedback also from from your side. Thank you very much. Um, now, it's my pleasure to invite uh, Professor Masmali, Vice Director for Planning and Development of King South University. Um, and uh, as we have heard already from the President of King Abdulaziz University, uh, the Saudi Arabian universities are placing this strategy in uh, in a, I would call it a mega strategy, which is Vision 2030. Uh, but we will learn more from uh, Professor Masmali. Professor Masmali, the, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm really very happy to be part of this session today. Uh, I'm here to present the King Saud University uh, Evort, uh, in meeting the uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia needs for qualified and skilled uh, professionals and to serve the community needs in good times and during crises such as the pandemic of COVID-19. Uh, yeah. Uh, in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the King Saudi University always looked at uh, as the role model to higher education in the kingdom and in the country. So the most government and high places in the country are graduates from King Saud University. Uh, the King Saud University, it's like the uh, reset of the higher education institutions aspire to provide uh, the best education and training to our students as well as uh, the robust research foundation to tackle cutting-edge uh, cutting research and to provide the nucleus of uh, emerging industries in the country. By doing so, we aim to bring King, 
Kingdom of Saudi Arabia society into a knowledge society. So this will require us uh, to uh, broaden our horizon and to align our policies with fast uh, developing uh, higher education sectors. Uh, we know uh, the competitions, which we usually call it collaboration, uh, is hard uh, between the institutions. Uh, to, achieve, to achieve our vision and objectives, we have a strategic plan that uh, brought our university from mostly education-based into research-based university. Uh, they require development and improvement of all aspects of our academic approaches. Some of these uh, uh, new state-of-art research laboratories and uh, centers, uh, employment of high caliber academic with uh, long track records in research, creating uh, tens of research shares, uh, increase research funding uh, from diverse resources. Uh, the outcome, if you look at the graph, is significant. There, uh, there is a significant improvement of King Saud University publication in the last uh, 12 years. So our publication quality has significantly improved as well as uh, we will see in the uh, next slide. Uh, the graph clearly shows a significant increase in our Q1 and Q2 uh, publication. Also, we encourage uh, collaborations with local, regional and international researchers and research groups. Uh, we have provided all the financial and logistic support to such collaborations. Uh, these collaborations cover uh, a wide spectrum of countries, which is increasing in their production and numbers. Now, uh, let us look at how much improvement uh, uh, in our research capabilities and, and competencies in reacting to crisis research uh, demands in the next slide. The King Saud University uh, has uh, risen to the urgent demand on COVID-19 pandemic, and King Saud University has taken top spot in the number of research publications in Saudi Arabia. Uh, we here in the university we established a quickly COVID-19 project, and encouraged and supported our researchers. Uh, into providing all necessary research into this pandemic. Number of published paper as of today has uh, superseded all local and regional institutions. Uh, our research is of high quality that World Health Organization has cited it uh, in their website. Also, our work has been published in high impact journal such as uh, Science Journal. The university was and still in the front line in fighting uh, the COVID-19 and to provide the necessary treatment, advice and informative uh, documentations to our community. Uh, the King Saud University is well equipped with the state of the uh, art establishment. We have here a medical city uh, which has uh, three large hospitals and eight specialized medical centers and sufficient qualified staff to accommodate our community needs. The university has three vaccination centers inside the campus and university hospitals. These centers provide vaccination to students, faculties, staff, and it's open for all the community. More than 97% of the university students and staff, they have received two doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, this is just one example of the King Saud University service to the community. Uh, King Saud University is I member since 2013, and we stand by the value, values and Berlin principles that are drawn during IREC BAST conferences. These conferences are a great platform to meet and exchange information by various rankers and specialists to be uh, in a way or other the indicators uh, for good performance and excellence. We learn and adapt to all indicators that uh, 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 support the higher education performance 
and we change our uh, on some time we can call it refine our approaches when and where it needed to achieve better service to our students, staff, and community. So our effort have been classified by many rankers and we are proud for all our achievement and always uh, we seek the better uh, contribution to the world research activities and better education to our student. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Matt Mali. I, I, uh, uh, I confirm what you have said about your standing support to IREC in, at the beginning of its existence. Uh, uh, this uh, support was particularly important. I'm very, uh, I just wanted to say, uh, which was um, for a, quite a a while uh, an issue in uh, in Arab region with collaboration with other Arab universities. I'm very glad to see on the chart which you have seen that this uh, interaction with other Arab universities is uh, has increased. Uh, that is something which uh, for me is. Um, um, also a confirmation of the right place for the universities in the strategy for, uh, for development of uh, the country and, and of the region. Um, we now have the last but not least uh, a presentation, not from the, from the very small, that is what is uh, very interesting in the Arab region is that you have huge country like uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and uh, really not so big country, uh, Ashman um, uh, and its university. Uh, it is, um, uh, I must say, um, that I uh, had a chance to visit many countries in the Arab region but I had not seen until now Ashman um, uh, in the, uh, which is uh, part of the uh, Arab United Emirates. So I am with great interest uh, going to listen to Professor uh, Karim Zakir, who is Chancellor of the Ayman University. Professor, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, Jan. And of course, you have an open invitation to visit Ajman University. It will be our pleasure uh, to host you here at, in Ajman. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you, Jan, for the introduction. Uh, I'm really delighted today to be uh, participating in uh, the IRAG uh, conference 2021. I will share some thoughts uh, with you on the effects of ranking, on strengthening the impact that Ajman University, or AU as we uh, call it here, is making on society. And maybe what is, will be a little bit different here is that I will try to link each initiative to uh, uh, ranking and uh, rating criteria, either QS or THE or other uh, rankings, so that those who are starting their journey in the ranking can maybe hopefully benefit from uh, this presentation. Yeah, so let me start with uh, the macro level or the national level, and then I will zoom in on what we do uh, at Ajman University. Uh, the United Arab Emirates it is advancing towards a knowledge-based economy that requires a high quality and harmonized higher education ecosystem, which is done at the ministry level, but also a strong research infrastructure and a comprehensive environment or ecosystem that nurtures innovation. And I think what the UAE has achieved today, according to different criteria and rankings, uh, especially from the World Economic Forums and other rankings, is really a good indicator of how the UAE is advanced towards uh, this uh, mission. Uh, so now let me uh, put things into context. Okay, working. Uh, 
by sharing the story of Ajman University, uh, including its geographic location, its purpose, what we have accomplished over the past few years, and how we made all this happen. For those who are not familiar with Ajman, and I'm glad that uh, uh, Jan uh, knows that Ajman is in the UAE, which is not always the case. Uh, Ajman is the smallest of the seven emirates of the UAE. It's located around 30 minutes on the north part from Dubai Airport, for those who have been to Dubai Airport, and I'm sure there are many of you. So uh, again, as you can see, Jan, this is not far at all from Dubai Airport, so 30 minutes. And again, you have an open invitation uh, to join us. Uh, the university was established in 1988. What we are proud of mainly is that it was the first university in the UAE to accept expat students. And we have been uh, uh, focusing on social responsibility and inclusion since day one, since 1988, especially helping and supporting uh, underprivileged people uh, not only from our community, but even uh, beyond the walls of the university, beyond the UAE and uh, in other parts of uh, the world as well. Uh, let, me, let me talk first about the international recognitions that we have achieved over the past years and what we have made to get there. Uh, here you can see that although AU was established in 1988, the first time it appeared in the global ranking was in 2019, and the first time it appeared in the Arab region was in 2018. Uh, you can see that we have made dramatic ascent in the QS rankings, uh, increasing, for example, a total of 31 places since 2018, in the Arab region, for, for example, uh, before 2019, we were not uh, appearing in the global ranking, but now we have been climbing the ranks almost consistently over uh, the past uh, few years since 2018. We have also gained or earned several uh, international accreditations starting from uh, 2018, uh, both at the institutional level, but also at the programmatic uh, level, where we have several colleges that have received uh, international accreditations. And we have also some other programs that are in the pipeline. And we have some visits uh, coming uh, soon. For example, we have the ASCSB visit for the College of Business that will be done in March 2022. And this hopefully will be added to the list of international uh, accreditation. So how all this have been done in relatively short term. Uh, in 2016, by the end of 2016, uh, the university has decided to focus on improving quality across the board and strengthening its positioning on the global map. The latter was never uh, a strategic priority. And this commitment to these two things have been, uh, uh, have started at the board of trustee level. And this is very important that that kind of commitment start at the top. It's much easier to cascade it later on uh, uh, to faculty, staff, students, and all different uh, stakeholders. Uh, this commitment is based on five pillars, as you can see, teaching and learning, innovation, capacity building, research, and social impact, which is one of our main uh, DNAs. So let me go through what we have done, maybe in a little more uh, detail. So teaching uh, and learning and producing competent graduates. Uh, we improved the caliber of new faculty. We have changed the pay scale. We made it much more competitive. As one of my colleagues have said, uh, the competition is fierce, not only at the local, but also at the regional level. So we wanted to attract high quality faculty. And we have changed the whole structure of the hiring process, where we advertise for the positions and how much we compensate financially uh, these faculty members. The other aspect that the Board of Trustees has invested a lot in is improving faculty to student ratio. As you can see, and those who are uh, familiar with academia would know uh, how much uh, uh, this investment would mean to a university of our size. So uh, the faculty to student ratio decreased 
or improved from 26 in 2016 to 14.4 uh, this fall semester. And we have also uh, improved uh, significantly our labs, studios, clinics, and all the learning tools that uh, we are using. This is important for the QS graduates employability ranking. This is also important for the QS employer reputation because once your graduates are really good and the employers are happy uh, with them, they are more likely to vote for you uh, when it comes to uh, to ranking. It's also very important for the QS stars. So this is a few things that we have done in terms of teaching. Uh, we also, as part of our mission, we want to graduate well-rounded citizens. Uh, well-rounded includes that they have global mind uh, and we have launched since uh, 2016 uh, more than 65 international uh, academic partners where students can go for exchange or study abroad, but also our faculty can conduct research. This is also good for QS academic reputation, and I'm sure that some of you or most of you are familiar with it. When it comes to voting for a university, it's better that your partner or your collaborator would know uh, uh, a little bit or, or as much as possible about your university and the quality of your students and the quality of your faculty. Uh, it's also important for the QS International Research Network, which is important and is one of the criteria, the Arab region uh, ranking. I don't think it's in the world ranking, but it is part of the Arab region ranking. It is basically how many papers you uh, conduct with uh, partners uh, in other institutions. It's also important for the QS stars and we received five stars in terms of uh, international internationalization. Uh, we have also uh, tremendously improved our uh, corporate partners uh, because this is part of uh, the, the hands-on approach that we are committed to. Uh, we uh, now the internship programs, the placements, the case studies, etc., are with top uh, quality uh, uh, international companies, including multinationals, but also uh, very prominent regional and local companies. This is very important for you, your QS employer survey. It's important that the employers would know you and your graduates or your interns before uh, they vote for you. It's also important for the QS graduates employability ranking because the, most, the more your uh, graduates are happy with their experience, the more uh, you have them as engaged uh, uh, alumni uh, in general. In terms of research, uh, since 2016, we have focused much more, uh, to be frank, on the quality of research. Uh, you can see that we have made really impressive Im improvements over the past years. Uh, our Scopus indexed journal since 2016 has improved by more than tenfolds. And all of you here are familiar with academia and know that research is one of the most time consuming uh, uh, changes to make in an institution. But uh, we have made all the required environment, the incentives, the recognition for faculty members. We have also, ha we also have uh, partners and research associates who are very much associated and conduct research. So now we have the right environment to conduct research, uh, quali high quality and high impact research, as we call it here. Uh, the number of our citations have increased tremendously as well. You can see that it has increased by more than three folds over uh, the past uh, few years. And I'm sure it will increase more because the citation will always take more time than uh, the publications, uh, as you know. Uh, we have also launched uh, five research centers on key areas or key disciplines, we believe, uh, like uh, digital transformation, healthy buildings, artificial intelligence, medical and bio-allied health sciences. By the way, health sciences are very important for us because we have uh, three colleges, one college of medicine, college of dentistry, college of pharmacy, but we also have a very active department of biomedical engineering, which offers the only undergraduate program in the UAE in biomedical engineering. So we focus a lot on 
medical and health sciences. So if uh, my colleagues want to collaborate on these disciplines, we are more uh, than glad to do it. Uh, as I said, innovation is uh, an integral part of our pillars, and we have to lead by example. Uh, the institution has improved a lot in terms of processes, in terms of uh, we are becoming and we became fully paperless. We made it very easy for the students to uh, uh, get registered or admitted or whatever. I mean, all the processes are uh, uh, online, are automated. We also uh, give the opportunity to students to innovate. We urge them and we support them to participate in international and regional uh, competitions. One of my colleagues in another university was telling me, without giving the name of the university, he told me that when we know that Ajman University students are participated in a competition in the UAE, we know that the three top positions are gone. So we really uh, uh, train our students with a very hands-on approach that helps them uh, get the best or the top places in uh, competitions. The infrastructure is really also high-tech and cutting edge. So I will try to speed up for the sake of time. Yeah, as I said, social impact is very important. Uh, our stakeholders, our faculty, our staff, our students and our alumni are always urged and supported to make a transformative impact on especially underprivileged people. For example, these are very, very few uh, things that I want to share. It's really a long list that we are proud of, but I will focus on three uh, initiatives. This is a mobile dental clinic that we launched in 2018. It goes to all the Emirates in the UAE to offer uh, free of charge dental services. In the past uh, three years, it has served more than 2,000 patients. This is in addition to uh, the free of charge uh, dental services that we offer on campus. Uh, we have also played a very important role during the pandemic. Uh, we have, uh, I think we were the first university in the UAE to have a vaccination star slash screening center. We have conducted more than 120,000 tests, including uh, the laser test, or what is called by the DPI, and of course the PCR test. And we have conducted more than 6,000 vaccines uh, to uh, different people, not only our community, but it was open to all those who want to receive the vaccine, of course, uh, free of charge. We are also very uh, supportive in terms of financial aid. This is part of our DNA. Uh, a huge budget uh, uh, of the university goes to financial support to uh, promote and uh, maintain the diversity that we are uh, committed to. Uh, entrepreneurship, I can talk forever about entrepreneurship given my passion, my passion for that. Of course, as you might know, uh, around 60% of the population in the Arab region is below the age of 25 and the public sector in the Arab region is the second most saturated public sector in the world after uh, China. Uh, so, of course, many universities have been supporting uh, uh, young entrepreneurs, uh, men and women, uh, to uh, transform their ideas into scalable ventures. Uh, and we have done a good job. We have uh, incubated slash accelerated uh, around 132 startups. Uh, they generated a uh, revenue of around 12 million uh, dirham and they generated funds and investment of around 5 million dirham. Of course, on the global scale, in terms of funding, this is probably relatively small, but I believe that one of the challenges that the entrepreneurship ecosystem in the region is facing is funding and investment. Uh, just one comment about our incubator. We do it for everyone, not for only for our students, but anyone who has a great idea and want to transform it into a, a, a scalable venture, uh, it's open for all of them. And we don't take any equity. So this is social responsibility initiative that we have done. In terms of capacity building, and again, I think this is one of uh, the challenges of the region. I think uh, the middle management especially needs a lot of training and a lot of programs to upgrade uh, their skills and to keep 
their skills up to date. So here we offer uh, tailored programs and open enrollment programs for entry level, middle management, but also executives or C-suite in different levels, in different disciplines without getting uh, into the details. But I think this is one of uh, 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 the, 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 the issues or the challenges that maybe universities in the region should get together to uh, uh, help the public sector and the private sector, maybe in other countries, not necessarily in the GCC, uh, in terms of capacity building and offering uh, continuing uh, education or uh, professional uh, development. Thank you very much uh, for listening. And thank you again for inviting me. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Chancellor. Um, I uh, congratulate you. It's the first time you participate in IREC uh, conference. So, uh, some words of uh, of impression of how you have uh, presented development of your university, I must say that it's uh, impressive. I particularly, uh, when I heard about the increase of the staff-student ratio, uh, that is, uh, that is a hard, for me, it's a hard uh, measurement for the commitment to the development of the university. Um, the uh, Scopus Index increase of publications is, I don't want to say that it's easier, but I, the, this, indi this indicator of staff-student ratio is um, uh, not only good for the university, but also for the society in large. I also noticed, and as we are an uh, organization in which the ranking is uh, uh, raison d'etre, uh, in a sense, I think that, uh, and I r relate to the COVID-19 relief package, that in the future I can imagine that um, this will be also one of the uh, criteria or uh, indicators which we are going to use in, in ranking. I can imagine that when you have the the ranking which will include, and we have such examples, so-called third mission, that in the context of the third mission, this COVID relief package uh, will be one of the indicators because COVID-19 not only has changed uh, the way how we look at many aspects of uh, functioning of university, Everyone knows about this moving from uh, um, traditional form of uh, course, organization of courses to much more, much more um, acceptance of online and maybe in more hybrid form. Let me just uh, end uh, with a personal note on it. Because you mentioned in, in the corporate uh, partners, you mentioned that one of them is Oracle. And it happens so that my son is already a couple of years in Dubai working, his manager at Oracle there. So uh, you invited me to come to, um, to your university, but I probably I will ask him first to, uh, to visit uh, your university and learn more about what Oracle is doing for and with your university. Apologies for this, sure. uh, this personal note, but just, just I, I, uh, I, am, uh, I know that he's very happy in the region, you know, that in, in, in Dubai. So just this. We don't have uh, time. We, are, we still have two minutes. Are there any uh, speakers who would like to take a floor because I don't think that uh, for technical reasons we cannot have the Q&A uh, part for our discussions. I think that we will have to postpone it for a better time when we will uh, be uh, able to see you each other in any location. Are there any uh, speakers who wanted to supplement? If not, I will pass it to the, uh, the mic and the video to our colleagues at, I, at the IREC Observatory. If not, 
let me thank you very, very much uh, for your very interesting uh, presentation. I learned, I took note, and uh, I'm, I'm sure that other participants also have shared these impressions which I had. Thank you very much. Thanks, John. Thanks, Thank everyone. Thank you very much, respected speakers. Thank you, Professor Sadlak, for this, for moderating this interesting and very inspiring session. And as you said, unfortunately, online events have one more limitation compared to on-site events. We do have to stick to time limits because of technical issues.